or your all routine sir, uh, dear uh, facebook uh, pure urology viewers uh, good evening one and all uh, today we are discussing about the most common topic many discussions have happened on the stone but uh, not many on the trp only one we have done bipolar trp with dr mansoor nagarwal sir now we are doing monopolar trp to be honest 90% of the prostates can be managed safely with monopolar trp is the opinion of all let us not go into the statistics and all that thing average 60 to 80 grams lot of urologist do uh, with uh, uh, less difficulty and ease within one one and a half hour maximum they finish the case rarely they transfuse the blood but generations of young urologists are coming 350 urologists per every year the amount of the trps have decreased so we need to often uh, talk about this monopolar trp today we have our speaker dr rajiv tp i don't think anybody in india does not know rajiv tp is not at all there because he is the one dynamic uh, uh, secretary last uh, immediate past secretary who has made the uh, conferences and urologists never felt that corona is there and this is a trend of uh, he also never felt that he has not traveled and he worked a lot in organizing the ten things and picked up lot of juniors without any bias Uh, to conduct the various urological society of india programs totally totally unbiased promotion of all the juniors you name anybody he, who is academically interested he was there in the program that is the spirit of the uh, conducting um, the usi programs so otherwise uh, rajiv sir i wanted to ask you good evening sir good evening you are in the hospital sir yeah good evening yeah. very good uh, always laughing uh, always laughing uh, basically dr rajiv sir i know from all india institute of medical sciences because when i was doing ms he was doing uh, i think second year during uh, 1997 to uh, 2000 that is the time i was in aims so probably he was doing the mch at that time we used to follow their rounds during three months posting and uh, rajiv sir before ms uh, uh, mch aims uh, your mbbs is from where sir from gohati gohati you are born and brought up in gohati no no i am born and brought up in uh, kerala calicut so you are uh, primarily kerala Ker or uh, uh, your parents are from gohati only i am primarily a full keralaian full care liet ha ah. okay okay great so then uh, why you moved to gauti sir then so it's a big story like um, i came to gauti through the central government thing okay okay not a gauti medical college so thereafter i did my mbbs then i did my post graduation then i got a job because uh, i was very close with the urology fraternity in gauti okay okay so oh, they wanted me to stay back so since i had my undergraduate here and everything mm. um, so i stayed back here oh we we were thinking is pure uh, uh, northeast type but uh, surprise news this is and uh, after that you coming from the aims sir uh, you joined uh, the government sector sir joined the government sector uh, oh. joined as the assistant professor here in the department of urology okay okay so uh, during your uh, during your uh, journey post mch from aims uh, have you what is your opinion of the prostate management so much has come bipolar enucleation bipolar trp uh, then laser then homium laser 100 watts 120 watts then 60 watts uh, like that um, in your in your call in your uh, government setup Uh, what are the equipments all available sir for re related to prostate we have almost everything you know everything you have everything 
bipolar, we have got bipolar, we have got colmium, we have got thulium, name anything. It's there readily available in our department. So you have used all of them for the prostate surgery? Uh, we have tried everything for the prostate. But ultimately, uh, what is your opinion, sir? Just uh, for the sake of uh, junior, those who are in private practice. Uh, this is basically I'm now telling for the young budding urologist. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Said and done, there are many armamentarium and many ways of tackling an enlarged prostate which needs uh, surgical management. Yeah. The thing, one has to expertise uh, this uh, TURP uh, uh, because that is the basis and still TURP is the gold standard globally. No one can uh, question that at all. Many yeah. people I am an expert in polmium, um, I am an expert in thulium, I do bipolar renucleation, whatever said and done. The basis is TURP. So being a young urologist, one has to have expertise in TURP. That forms the basis for all other advanced procedures, even laser. And whenever you land up in problem during a laser procedure also, you are saved by your expertise. <laughs> TURP. That no one can deny that part yeah so with this we will listen we want to listen from you because you are very experienced in the government sector and you might have done thousands of these procedures i'm happy that you have all in the department when everything is available then you'll speak from your core uh, i wanted to introduce briefly officially your cv and then we will go to the program uh, i thank you once again sir even even i was very Happy the way you conducted the Urological Society of India programs. That was really a memory, sir. Monopolar URP. Uh, Dr. Rajiv TP, sir, is MBBS, MS, MCH. Uh, uh, he is professor and head of the Urology Gauhati Medical College Hospital. Past Secretary General Urology Society of India. Past Honorary Secretary Urology Society of India, East Zone Chapter. Past Honorary Treasurer Urological Society of India. Past Treasurer Sark Association of Urological Surgeons, past Council Member Urological Association of Asia, and uh, visiting professor University of Minnesota, USA, best paper award of USA. He published in 57 research papers in the international journals and 51 research papers in national journals. Unimaginable and uh, very, very, very cool, calm. That is his uh, single word. This thing is that he does everything, but he appears very cool and calm. We all have to learn from him. Same face I am seeing for last uh, 20 years. Great, sir. Please uh, proceed with your talk. I once again thank you and uh, cover the points for the juniors and enlighten them for you with your uh, rich experience. Thank you, sir. Before I start uh, sharing my screen, I have to say I was I'm very uh, thankful to the Preeti Urology and Kidney Hospital, especially the head of uh, the or the chair there, uh, Dr. Chandra Mohan. He was a great friend of mine. I have known him for the last 20 odd years when he was a junior resident uh, and he worked with me when I was the MCH resident at All India Institute. Since then, we have been maintaining, we are good friends, in fact. And uh, Chandra Mohan, we know after that, uh, he did his MCH from PGI Chandigarh and thereafter. He's a very well-known figure in uh, not only in South India, across India as well, especially in the field of uh, stone management, RIRS. He's one of the uh, person who is uh, flag bearing the RIS procedure across India. And I'm uh, very thankful uh, when you gave me this thing, I really agreed to join this program. I'm really happy. And I am really happy to know that you are continuously doing this program. Uh, which will, is very beneficial to the younger urologist who is watching this regularly because he is touching almost all aspects in urological practice. And this is since it's a video based and somebody records it and says it's a very, it's a quite learning. So he has started a very good initiative in the name of Pure. I am really thankful from the core of my heart for starting this initiative. It's a great academic piece to all the younger generations. Thank you. I'll start my talk. 
good evening everyone uh, today my topic is turp monopolar especially the tips and tricks and how and how i do and when i do it so this is basically start with the indications of uh, turp it is basically elective or it can be emergency elective also as all of you know it, there are various absolute indications and uh, relative indications among the absolute indications nowadays it is refractory urinary retention due to enlarged prostate recurrent gross hematuria which may be refractory to medical treatment and recurrent urinary tract infections associated with bph there are various relative indications and uh, one of them is an elevated or increasing uh, post void residual urine associated bladder stones and bladder diverticulum lump one of the emergency procedure is that is refractory hematuria uh, because of uh, due to benign enlargement of the prostate now comparison why turp is still the gold standard because the associated less learning curve this procedure is available in all centers practicing urology across india lesser expertise needed than laser it's a compared to laser low cost for setting up a unit and with bipolar turp there is significant reduction in relation to the ever scared tur syndrome and we can do it as uh, earn feasibility of performing even in large size prostate why laser is disadvantages compared to turp because of the high economical cost of laser it may be possible in the initial stages for a individual urologist longer duration of surgery while using laser there is some steep learning curve more than 35 to 50 cases to be performed before you become an expertise in laser surgery now cornerstones in turp why say there it should be a controlled irrigation flow there should be apt application of the cutting and coagulation current setup then the handling of the resectoscope there is a general sense of being at home when you do a turp automatic sequence of reflex action and there are two ways either a two hand technique versus a one hand technique when you arrange a tur probably one has to be very seen once we before you start performing this you have to inspect all the equipment and see everything that is required for the turp is readily available in the trolley right from the cystoscope sheet telescope resectoscope sheet working element the loops which are available then i use the dilators then the diathermy cord evacuation sets and everything so this you have to inspect and see that everything is readily available in the trolley next thing is that one has to be careful about the lithotomy position the patient should not be uncomfortable patient will be mostly in spinal anesthesia too much and abduction can cause dislocation of uh, the hip so one should be in an apt lithotomy position that we called it 45 degree then one have to see for the cautery settings diathermy setting it should be cutting at 100 watts coagulation at 50 watts cutting should be in the pure mode coagulation will should be in the spray mode and one has to see that the diathermy plate is placed appropriately otherwise this may be a factor for the diathermy bay burn because olden days we have seen many patients post turp there can be burn behind the back which may be a source for bed sore which is seen quite rarely these days next is to do a, a pro proper cystoscopic evaluation cystic urethroscopy to assess the landmarks this is i am doing a urethroscopy evaluating the urethra now looking for the varu montanum then gently and casually proceed into the bladder then you see the intra urethral bulge of the lobes of the prostate there can be enlargement of the lateral lobe and enlargement of the medial lobe then once you see then gently enter into the bladder and we have to do an appropriate evaluation of the bladder first of all look for the urethral orifices and see what is the distance of the urethral that is bursius bar from the bladder neck 
because this is basically to have an idea because while resecting, one should not injure the urethral choroid base. Then a thorough survey around all walls of the uh, bladder. This is to see with what is the degree of trabeculation, circulation, any bladder diverticulum, any other lesions in the bladder one has to see because sometimes there can be associated papillomas of the bladder in case of POP. Then next is assessment of the prostatic urethral length. You have to gradually withdraw the cystoscope sheath. First is to keep the tip of the sheath at the bladder neck and gently withdraw it to the varu. Once the, once the sheath is placed at the uh, tip of the sheath is placed at the bladder neck, you have to keep a finger on the sheath at the level of the external meatus. Then gradually withdraw the sheath up to the uh, varu mondanum. Then you see outside how much is the length of the sheath withdrawn. Thereby you can see, assess the length of the prostatic urethra. Normally when there is an intraurethral bulge of the lateral lobes of the prostate, the prostatic urethra gets stretched and elongated. Next, why we routinely do, because this is what I learned from my alma mater, All India Institute of Medical Sciences, because various people, surgeons have various techniques, we always do, in all cases, routine dilatation of the urethra. We dilate the urethra to a size two French more than the size of the resectoscope sheet. So if you are using a 24 French resectoscope, which is the outer diameter, we will dilate the urethra two size more, that is to up to 26 French. But this dilatation should be very gently done with proper lubrication of the urethra. Suppose if the external meatus is not admitting the dilator in some 10 to 15 percent of cases, maybe you may have to require a meatotomy prior to dilating the urethra. After that, it is again in introducing the appropriately, you have to assemble the resectoscope sheath then introducing the sheet into the bladder. That is, it should be very gentle and there should not be any injury because the sites of injury are commonly the external urethral meatus. That is why you are dilating the external urethra two size more than the size of the sheet. Then gradually introduce the sheet resectoscope into the bladder. This is how we normally hold and this should be done very gently. Once the resectoscope sheath is into the bladder, you detach the obturator, and first of all, you empty the bladder. After that, we are uh, uh, we will fit the other things, like this is the irrigation channel. Next, this is the outlet, because these are decided because there are arrow marks. In the arrow mark, which you can see here, it will be arrowed downwards, there you will connect the irrigation channel and again the other arrow that where it is the outlet where we collect the outlet tube because this is a continuous irrigation system so that we need not detach the system now and not because in earlier days there were other system because non-continuous system is there. Nowadays we have got the Iglesias continuous irrigation resectoscope which may be rotatable and non-rotatable majority of the people use the rotating one. After that, we assemble, you have to see that the uh, telescope is properly assembled in the working element and the loop is adequately fixed. And then we attach the uh, diatomy cable here. There are two types of uh, loops available. O earlier days, we use a double stem, but nowadays double stem is hardly used. Now we used almost a single stem loop. If there is a double stem loop, then the thing is that the, it's a different diatomy cable and whereas in case of a single stem, the, the diatomy cable is totally different. Now, this is the two hand technique. With one hand, you study the uh, resectoscope sheet and with the other hand, you gently introduce the working element with the telescope and loop into the resectoscope sheet 
while doing that, the working element should be supported by the tub so that inadvertently the tip of the telescope or not the and the loop is not hit against the resectoscope sheet, thereby you can cause damage to the telescope or the loop while introducing. That is why it should be a two-hand well-controlled way of introducing the working element. Now, this is to show the height of uh, the irrigation uh, system. It should be placed around 40 to 50 centimeter level from the level of the symphysis pubis. It, you all know that when the irrigation fluid is kept at this level, this is to achieve a flow rate of 200 ml per hour. And it is said that when the flow rate is 200 ml per hour, the vision will be clear. That is the basic idea of keeping the irrigation channel at this uh, uh, suitable uh, height of 40 to 50 centimeters. Now, what are the commonly used irrigation solutions? There were various solutions which has been tried in olden days. The irrigation fluid was sterile, boiled and cooled sterile water. But that was associated with a lot of uh, TUR syndrome because of absorption of water into the circulation and causing generalized hemolysis. Now we are using routinely, everyone is using 1.5% glycine. With this, the, the incidence of TUR syndrome and associated problem have drastically reduced because glycine is a solution which has an osmolality of 220 milliosmol per kg. Now, before going to the main thing, one should know about cutting a chip. So before starting cutting, one should lift the resectoscope to allow the loop to sink in, that the loop should sink in behind the lobe to be cut. Then keep it level as it cuts the chip. So it should be horizontal. Then when you, once you know that the, you have achieved the length of the chip to be cut, you depress the sheet so that the chip which you have cut is removed. Otherwise, it will uh, uh, hang around the lobe just like tags. That is why at the end of the resection, you have to depress the sheet so the chip is cut off. Now, shape of the chip ideally should be like a keno, and it should be as wide and deep as the loop. And the length of the resected chip will be determined by the amount of travel you have done by the loop. Cutting the chip off before the loop enters the sheet prevents injury to the telescope. Now complete, com coming to the bleeding control. Smaller vessels can be controlled by coagulating, that is by spraying at the mouth of the bleeder. If there are larger vessels, then it can be controlled by applying the loop to one side of the wall in order to see the wall together. Because if you apply right over the mouth, like in smaller vessels, you may not be able to control bleeding from the larger vessels. When the artery is pointing straight at the surgeon, one, the surgeon will be able to see only a red blur. In such a scenario, the surgeon should advance the sheath a little bit further, then tilt it to squeeze the vessel, and then just coagulate upstream. Now, prophylactic coagulation sites, we always follow this because you know that the bad knock arteries enter the prostate at five o'clock and seven o'clock position. And we start the resection basically at this level. I will highlight in my coming videos. External sphincter should, is identifiable at the level of the membranous urethra. And one must, it is very necessary to be aware of the possession of the Varu Montanum. Always you have to see the Varu is intact or not. This is just to maintain a safe distance from the external sphincter and assuring that the external sphincter is not injured during your resection. Morm I normally follow the Mormeyer standard techniques because this was the technique which I taught while I was doing my training at All India Institute, Institute of Medical Sciences. We do resection in lobes. If there is a middle lobe, middle lobe is started at first and tissues lateral to Varu Mondanum, followed by the left lobe, then the right lobe, and last of all, the apical tissue. <clears throat> we normally start if there is a median lobe resection, 
begins at the proximal portion of the medial lobe at six o'clock position, and resection resectoscope is placed just proximal to the varu mondanum in order to protect the varu mondanum. So, if you are not seeing the varu mondanum, you should be see that you are covered up the varu mondanum and you are safe. And resection in the initial stages, all the young uh, budding urologists should know should carried out always controlling the end point of each cut. Now, this is a video. I'm starting to take a chip at the seven o'clock position. Then I just spray the bleeders, then it stop. Then I take a cut at the five o'clock position slowly and gently, then spray the bleeders because one has to always maintain a good vision then I take the chip at the six o'clock position and this place I keep on deepening the resection till I come to see the capsular fibers. Once I reach the capsular fibers, then I stop the resection, that is the depth, then I continue it at other places. So repeating the same procedure again, continue resecting the middle lobe from seven o'clock to five o'clock position. Resection at both sides of the varu mountainum with particular care of the position of the external sphincter. In no situation, the distal cut should be extended beyond the varu mountainum. Pull the resectoscope in the urethra just distal to the varu mountainum, and, and one should ascertain that there is no falling and obstructing tissues. Resection of the right lateral lobe proximal part in long cuts next to each other to achieve smooth surface and fossa. Now this is how I continue the resection, light right lateral lobe. And always see that in the initial stages, always taking a chip, you see whether there is any visible bleeder and that bleeder should be sprayed immediately so that you will have a very clear vision during the resection. The clear vision is very important because if it becomes totally reddish in the initial stages, you will become tensed up and uh, there are chances of injuring the capsule and having perforations. So always one should be very steady and gentle and uh, perfect hemostasis Im even after immediately after taking the chip so that you maintain a very good and uh, clear vision while during, during the resection. So resection of the left lateral lobe proximal part in long cuts is the next thing to each other. Jaik, you are done in the, on the right side which lobe should be done first? It's basically depending upon the surgeon. It is the surgeon's choice always. Now, this is the opposite lobe I am doing. Again, in the same way as on the right side, the left side also taking the gently and steadily. The depth is always see once you, the bleeder immediately, I am spraying it and the bleeder is stopped. So you always should be think that you should have a very clear vision during the resection. Shape of the fossa after resecting the proximal part of the both the lateral lobes, both lateral lobes in long cuts. And this is the fossa I always uh, want after I complete the resection. You look from just uh, distal to the varu mountainum and see whether you have achieved a completely round. The, the, uh, the urethra should look round absolutely. And from the varu mountainum, you should be able to see the bladder and the prosthetic fossa should be absolutely smooth. This is, I always, once I complete, I inspect the bladder neck. I will tell you why, because I'm seeing whether there is a rim of bladder mucosa or not. So I always prefer to leave a rim of bladder mucosa from two o'clock to 11 o'clock position. This is because I have been taught, if you leave a rim of bladder mucosa in this position, the chances of post-operative bladder neck stenosis or stricture in the future can be greatly reduced. Now, inspection of the prosthetic fossa for any bleeder or anything. After that, I verify that absolutely there is, it's clear. Now, this is another post-procedure urine flow. What I do is that once I have uh, done the procedure, when I have evacuated the chips from the thing, what I do is I fill up the bladder and make the bladder partially distended. 
remove the resectoscope sheath remove the back no? Re remove the resectoscope sheath remove the resectoscope sheath and then i apply a pressure in the suprapubic region and see the flow then stop pressure then see whether there is any continence again press and see that is why if there is continence when you think it's a thing that you are not done gross any damage to the external sphincter yes sir once again i am showing and you can see that a very, very clear urine there is perfect hemostasis is achieved here resection of the apical tissue should be done carefully because varu is situated and here one has to be very careful to check chip small small chips not like long chips how we have taken before because otherwise inadvertently you can injure the varu mondanum and the sphincter some people used to do put a finger in the rectum and then elevate it in order for the ease of cutting the chips but when you acquire experience this is not required so following the procedure i prefer putting a 22 french three way catheter and balloon is inflated routinely to 30 ml and balloon catheter within the bladder with the traction on bladder neck to contract the fossa this is a preferred method by most of the surgeons because if there is given traction with the balloon and the bladder neck this allows the capsule to contract without causing much trauma to the urethra some surgeons advocate traction by a gauze swab tried around the catheter and pull back but for a short time but this is not required because your aim is not to cause ischemia to the bladder neck because this is another factor again for uh, the post operative bladder neck stricture in the future so again to recapitulate the steps of trp identification of the landmarks removal of most of the adenoma step wise as i have shown in the end washing out the prostate with elix evacuator one has to be careful by exerting pressure on the elix evacuator it should be a control pressure if you insert too much pressure then this may cause bladder, uh, bladder perforation or bladder rupture which i have seen a uh, few cases because inadvertently too much of pressure exerted then once the tissues are removed you have to again reinspect the prostatic fossa because of the up and down movements of the thing and there can be some capillary or venous use present and if there is anything you <coughs> go for complete hemostasis your main aim is achieving complete hemostasis and reinspect the prostatic fossa as i shown earlier in my video then you see per urethral catheter application catheter traction can be given for 12 hours if necessary only and irrigation overnight irrigation i say and i normally nowadays we never go for catheter traction at all and we give overnight irrigation to wash out any clots or anything if it is formed in the bladder then catheter is routinely removed 72 hours then we have give a trial voiding once it is satisfactory then we discharge the patient home patient should be advised not to strain exert excessive strain while voiding for a period of 4 weeks this is because if he strains more because the prostatic fossa it takes around 3 weeks plus for healing and proper epithelialization till then there is chances of bleeding from the prostatic fossa so one should avoid excessive straining while defecation and suppose somebody has problem with bowel evacuation patient may be given laxatives and this is optional thank you thank you very much sir such an excellent uh, presentation so we will take the questions uh, in a very crisp manner you have finished the talk it is actually the uh, uh, the truth what you have told is uh, simple steps have to be followed but it is it will not be uh, uh, as simple always we think some hiccups will be there keeping the juniors in point of view 
uh, I want to, to ask a few questions. First question from the audience, how to differentiate between the capsule and the prostatic tissue? This is just uh, if we young people, you have to show the our bread. Prostatic tissue looks like the bread, whereas the capsule will be absolutely white. So the pale yellow creamish color and the bread, when you have a chips remaining, you take a bread piece and compare it. It looks exactly the same, whereas the capsular fibers will be exactly clean and white. Clean and white. Uh, but a good comparison. Uh, I was thinking what you will tell. It looks like a granule with uh, some amount of yellowish tissue, whereas capsule looks like a, a flat fibers, horizontal fibers type of uh, thing. But he compared nicely with bread. I was thinking wow, wow, with what we can compare. This is the advantage of uh, professors who teach in the teaching colleges. They will have ready-made answers for these type of questions. Great. Next question is Vijay Bhaskar. What is the role of catheter traction post URP? If you have done very well, do you require traction or not? So if you have achieved perfect hemostasis, there is no need of catheter traction at all. That's what I said in the end. Sir, but the problem is if you achieve very good TURP, some or the other areas, at least three, four areas, you will injure the capsule or the venous sign sites. If you have done near perfection TURP, if you have done a smooth passage over the gland only, without going up to the class capsule in all areas, it is okay. But if you go here and there, venous capsules will be this thing. Whenever do you elix evacuation, if you go inside, again gush of bleeding appears. Whatever time you spend, some amount of ooze will be there, but they will be stopped by traction in just 10 minutes. Uh, what is your opinion, sir? Is it true? That's why I have shown specifically. Sir. We inspect the prosthetic fossa after evacuating all the chips. Yes, sir. And that too, in the end, you keep the tip of the resector scope sheet distal to the varu montanum, stop the irrigation flow yeah. and in fossa to see whether there is any appreciable ooze or anything. That's if a great point. Even if it is small arteriole at the bladder neck region may be missed, uh, you can go and coagulate. If you... Yeah. If you stop at what sir says, if you stop at the veru and stop the flow and see, it is a very, very valid point. Even if you have done suboptimal TURP, the bleeder won't stop unless the BP is kept very low uh, by the anesthetist. If it is more than 110, definitely you will see the ooze. Go to that particular area and finish it off two, three times. If you do that, chances of missing a major bleeder will, will not be there. Am I correct, sir? What you said is the same. And I, I will always tell the anesthetist to keep the BP and yes, the procedure towards 130 by 80. Then I know what uh, is uh, good because if the BP is quite low, there may not be any bleeder. Yes, yes. BP, very low BP coming out is dangerous. Again, uh, the question from Srinivasan G, uh, what is the role of pacemaker and monopolar TURP? Some tips, sir, please. See, we have done uh, cases uh, of biphasicular block with pacemaker, even temporary pacemaker, permanent pacemaker. Only issue was the distance uh, from the of the where we place the electrode sheet. Earlier in olden days, it was placed behind the sacrum at the back. Now it is placed around the thigh, lower part of the thigh. So yes, if there is a two feet distance from the uh, between the uh, pacemaker site and this thing that is sufficient enough. Only thing is that sometimes when you cut the thing, there can be some aberrations in the uh, reading of the cardiometer. Sir, one important question is asked by the Tiwari, Madhav Tiwari. Normally, when you do the uh, uh, the central part of the gland, you will be cutting, 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 uh, and the middle part of the prostate is slightly posterior. So. During LA equation, subtrigonal, uh, uh, the uh, making subtrigonal cavity is possible. So, uh, you, you are understanding my question, sir. So, if you are a large medial lobe with a posterior part more, if you wanted to make it th th uh, the draw at the posterior aspect, the bladder neck mucosa will be slightly at higher side. When you are doing a leak, sir, the, the scope may hit down by the time you go. 
you will see one more force of behind the trigon so one police ke that always goes into that invariably goes into that how to address these two problems what i do is that i never evacuate the chips in between yeah 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 that's okay so then the thing is that first of all even if there's a huge median low it is resected first and okay. gradually and it is resected so that is why i said first of all before starting the section i take two chips one at the 5 o'clock and one at the 7 o'clock position yes. so i get the limit where i should so once i reach the limit then further till i have to go a little bit deeper to expose the capsule of fibers so i need know the limit so your main thing at that point one should not undermine the bladder neck this once you undermine the bladder neck there are a lot of problems because even if you achieve perfect hemos then while putting the catheter also it's a big issue because the catheter always goes and tip, goes and sticks there it causes hematuria you will have to use introducer for inserting the catheter everything so that is why first even if the mid first one chip at 5 o'clock position one chip at 7 o'clock position this is to have a perception of the depth then you gradually chip by chip it at the median low till you reach the uh, thing you have made at 5 o'clock and 7 o'clock and thereafter at the bladder neck you can make slowly and gently deeper cuts yeah so that is a very valid point that you should know the plane where you have to stop better to make that plane early and maintain the same rest of the procedure is the most important points are told i will add a small point by chance if you are over enthusiastic have done the posteriorly leaving trigonal mucosa hanging then two tips is that you when you doing elix evacuator as sir said do at the end don't repeatedly do it and keep the keep the beak at the roof so that it will never touch the floor and second pass the foley catheter over the guide wire these two will help madhav and uh, sir vijay baskar has asked uh, uh, madhav tiwari again asked uh, if in the beginning part of your career what is wrong if you leave a small amount of apical tissue to avoid even one case of incontinence it's an excellent question because incontinence in that first first time when you are in private practice happens you will not get sleep the occasions have supplied pads out of emotion one or two months and continuously became friend with him uh, hours have spent because weekly one case you will be doing when you start your practice and i had one case uh, and i had uh, i became very emotional with him ultimately he adjusted and he has for for excused me then i relaxed what is your opinion sir so it's a very good question like in the initial stages you are bound to leave some apical tissue but even if you leave don't do uh, over enthusiastic cutting in the initial stages once you gain experience you will be able to clear all the apical tissues and um, even if you leave something and you find it difficult it's better to leave it will not cause uh, any uh, too much of a problem only yes, when you yes. see pop of tissues in the floor only then the patient will not have significant improvement if, if some amount is kept on either side no problem at all but only your priority is not to injure the sphincter fibers that yes, is uh, the other question from ashtosh kumar is any role of dutasteroid in the post operative period what trenostat dutasteroid dutasteroid in the post operative period so uh, this was a yes i think uh, we also believe dutasteroid has some role wherein because it may be psychological but we have found it beneficial in fact yes yes sir we for around 2 to 3 months uh, just to do test right uh, yes. this is basically to avoid the new uh, vascularization that may happen and this patients have done well and uh, we we after using it we have found that there is less incidence of post operative hematuria i don't know whether the test right is asking but only explanation is that it prevents new vascularization and it has been found beneficial in the practice i feel uh, sir one of my junior when i was in chandigarh the immediate junior ranganathan has done the study on the uh, ultrasound based as well as their elastic resistance index as well as post operative chips and number of capillaries he has proven that 3 weeks if you give dutasteroid before before surgery significant reduction in the blood supply of the prostate will be there and there is a concept even anti androgen therapy before doing for a short period of anti androgen therapy they are all they are all uh, definitely theoretically logical but post operative as sir said it is psychological 
I always give for one week if I have left a little bit of gland in a very large gland. I'm tired of rejecting. If I have definitely in TURP, you cannot do like a nucleation. 20, 30 grams may be there. That will shrink and patient may cause better urination is my feeling. And I think majority of us use in the post-operative period if they feel bleeding and large gland. I think so, sir. Yeah. Uh, too much uh, scientific proof may, may, may not be able to be given. But uh, Kalyan Babu has asked, uh, some surgeons practice uh, bicolitamide, same question he is asking, uh, uh, Degorelix pre-op in large glands to decrease the vascularity, sir. Your comment, sir. I have never used any of these drugs as a pre-operative in benign enlargement of the prostate. The classical teaching, a, a, any teacher, any professor will not accept for this. For those who are at least exam going, don't tell this. This is not accepted. And uh, it is the uh, only thing is that patients who are on dutasteroid are coming now to us with glands and they are usually less bleeding, they say. And it, it is consistency of the gland also, they say that changes. It becomes little glandular, glandular type, round, 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 puffs will, fl fluffies will come in between, they say. I, I feel it, this is a practical discussion we are doing. Nobody is going to say anything if you are observation. I observe that if you cut it, less bleeding and in the especially middle part of the gland, you will have loose fluffy cotton type of uh, feeling after deuterosteroid long treatment. A lot of patients are coming now, sir, with deuterosteroid treatment. Yeah, because yes. most of the patients everywhere, they have tried combination therapy and other things. But deuterosteroid is a part of the combination therapy. They have tried three months, six months. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Some cases we do are not fresh cases because all have been on medical management these days. And yes, those sir. refractory to medical management only come for two years. And what you said is true. Yes, sir. Uh, look fluffy when you keep on cutting. Uh, Safa, uh, Safahun Amsal is a good, if, a very good question he asked. Uh, after doing good TRP, difficulty of inserting catheter at the end, uh, why it occur? Any tips, sir? It is be, uh, basically because uh, you might have, uh, I told you, undermining of the bladder neck is. Yeah, bad. that is one thing. Another thing is that you might not have dilated the urethra appropriately. Yes. And and there, there can be there, and sometimes there can be some inadvertently you have cause of false passage or something while introducing your um, instrument or anything. So okay. common uh, causes where you find difficulty. Uh, so in such situations, like uh, uh, we have, uh, it is better to do with an introducer, gentle uh, catheterization, because the thing is an introducer when you insert into the catheter, it will be uh, quite stiff and you will be able to negotiate just like a Buji be negotiated into the bladder. Yes, sir. We, we also notice that the uh, uh, the folies can curl up in the prostatic urethra if it is very long one. Uh, for, for me, I think uh, I use uh, 23, uh, this uh, 22 French catheter tip cut with 11 number blade. And uh, first you put a uh, guide wire, thick guide wire 0 0.038 termo and over that thread it. And uh, why be, after inflating, confirm with the uh, parietal examination and pull uh, pull is very important at least three to five centimeters should, should come with the drawback if it is in prostatic fossa or urethra not even a millimeter will be pulled back and uh, you should in benefit or don't always remove deflate and remove and then reinsert but uh, not, i think uh, everybody does that one thing, there, one, one thing i have to say here is that sir, sir. difficulty also when you introduce the catheter, the catheter has to be inserted till the bifurcation into the bladder. Yeah, yeah. Yes, 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 yes. And that is a basic ABCD of urology and holds very much in prostate because uh, sometimes large prostate can curl entire thing without feeling. Normally, urologists will easily feel that it is curling, but in prostatic urethra, you may not feel because it's quite away. So that's a very, very important point that water should come freely, hematuric blood should come freely. And uh, the uh, after inflation, uh, entire thing should go in. After inflation, you have to withdraw. When you are withdrawing, four or five centimeters should come back. Even the longest penis, some amount of folies comes back. And when you put irrigation, it should immediately come. Irrigation should come immediately uh, through the uh, another ch the outflow channel. Then you are confident that uh, otherwise it is not good. Separately, patient will have pain. Mother, the so you know, uh, the Srinivasan ji asked tips for ejaculation uh, uh, preserving TURP. This is a good question, sir. 
that is uh, um, uh, tried nowadays. I don't think many urologists are trying this thing because that is why you are not uh, resecting the ejaculatory ducts because that may not be possible in all cases because some fibrous prostate is there, small size prostate is there. Then you will be able to do the ejaculation preservation TRP. But there are big lobes, sometimes overhanging lobes. Sometimes you have seen that some of the lobes may hang even distal to the varum on venom. In those cases, it is very difficult to do a ejaculation preserving uh, thing. So only in small fibrous prostates with significant LUTs where you are contemplating on uh, a resection, then the, you can um, preserve the ejaculatory LUTs. Uh, sir, actually, the, some people say that if you leave one centimeter in front of the veru and if you don't cut by the side of the veru, the, this thing, uh, that, that is the technique, no, sir? Yeah. Yeah. So, para uh, veru region, if you don't cut, uh, the muscles or whatever the ducts, they will ejaculate the uh, semen. That's what I say. But uh, I I have not done any time and I have not seen many of the portions uh, of my post-op, they will not pass a single drop of uh, uh, semen. And I always tell them uh, that it won't come because in India nowadays they are asking, sir, I am they are, they are asking after two months only, one month only that... Uh, uh, there is no drop of semen. Some people are disappointed that you have not told before. I think better to tell the patient before this point at least. In the era of CP and other things, you have to explain this factor to the patient uh, before you contemplate on doing a TRP. Yes, this is what to see that uh, there will, it will be a totally a dry jet. The yes, is whether he has completed his family, whether he is contemplating on another child or something, then you will not be taken up for a TRP. So this yes, should be well explained and the consent from the patient in this uh, contest should be taken. Uh, sir, uh, uh, Mother Thirad's video you recommend stepping up antibiotic if uh, micro abscesses found during resection? No stepping up of the antibiotic. Oh, no. Because you are draining anyway, more so you are draining. So less antibiotic. Uh, uh, I, I also feel that uh, no, sir, there is no need of uh, stepping antibiotic. Uh, sir, I like to ask some questions. Uh, uh, sir, if the ureteric orifices are not seen in the beginning because of the large median low, there is no need to bang your head and proceed safely on the from the top of the median low or is there any technique that you will go third or 3 o'clock and 5 o'clock and reset? Anything like that, sir? So first of all, the first and foremost thing that I said, when you do a cystoscopic evaluation, your main idea is to see whether you can see the uh, ureteric orifice or not. Sometimes it may, may not be possible because when there is intravesical protrusion of the lobes into the thing, sometimes that may hide the thing. That is why I say when you take a trough at five o'clock and seven o'clock, you are giving a cleavage. Then you always when you are resecting the median lobe, you should have the mind that you are not seen the ureteric orifice. So gradually, when you cut and cut and cut, then you will achieve that you have created more space. In majority of the situation, you will be able to identify the ureteric orifice. Sir, I have seen one of my junior way back, 14 years back in medical college, he was doing, and his loop was dipping behind the gland and was cutting. That injured the ureteric orifice. So, uh, you, you, what is your opinion? You should never dip the loop too much. Uh, you cut the superficial part and slowly uh, dig into the submucosal part, not into the directly trigonal loop and without knowing what you are cutting, just drag it, dangerous. And always distend the bladder. I must tell you, if you distend the bladder in the beginning, there will be some play for you. Even a collapsed bladder, uh, something can be caught in your uh, loop and it can be disastrous. Yeah, that is true. Yes, never, never start resection in a collapsed bladder. Yes, sir. Sir, while during the apical uh, uh, this thing, is it better to reduce the whatever you said 150? Is it better to reduce the frequency? And if you are really doubtful, sometimes monopolar cautery burns like anything. Lot of genes, you know, to avoid bleeding, they keep high, and it uh, no bleeding will be there in medium glands. That is too much. Uh, so when you do that, uh, it may be hot. At the, uh, like what we say, laser, same thing will happen with TRP loop. In fact, maybe more. Uh, whenever you see TRP loop, it will be hot. 
in this context, I have to say that, like, see, the external fibers not start at the level of the varu mountaina. It will be millimeters distal to the varu mountaina. So when yes. you when you withdraw the varu mountaina, and from the base you can see the fanning out of the fibers. Yes, sir. The, what I we normally do, we make a mark at the proximal limit of the varu. Okay. Yes. Not a marking with the a triangulation the, marking. Like any partial nephrectomy marking, you just mark posterior, at least base. Now, then you take very slow and steady small, small chips. As you said, uh, the beak should be, uh, uh, be just uh, distal to Veru, not too much. And everything left hand is fixed and right hand is cutting small pieces. I, I say hair cutting person at the end of the hair cutting, he will do trimming with a small, small hand now. on the sides and back. He will not cut anything, just two, three uh, millimeters he will trim. That is the way TRP chips are trimmed. Sir, one more thing. Nowadays, 40 to 50 years young males uh, come with uh, all classical features of uh, outlet obstruction and they will have moderate size gland. And they try and say that I can't bear with this. I don't mind having not uh, semen. And uh, even they even when we explain that your sex also can come down because of TURP, uh, the, the desire also may come down. Even then they go for it. Do you advise bladder neck incision only or if the prostate is large, do a formal TURP in less than 50 years patient? See, suppose you have tried all whatever resources uh, in your hand and find finding that patient is not significantly improving symptomatically as well as the parameters available with you like flow rate, ultrasound, post void, residue, everything. Then there is no other options like you have to recommend an invasive, minimally invasive procedure for him. So if it is a gland which is more than 60 gram, 50, 60 gram, I don't think just bladder neck incision is going to help him out. Then yes. you are a formal resection is yeah. I also have gut feeling that unnecessarily he will be unhappy once he has given consent. A large gland bladder neck incision will not be helpful unless it is only high bladder neck, uh, which is a different issue like neurogenic bladder, high bladder neck. Now retention that is all different issue. But if in after 40 years, if you see 60 grams posted and both lobes are protruding, if you do bladder neck incision, usually satisfaction will not be that much. And they will have irritative symptoms along with it because you have made uh, some incision. Sir, uh, very important question. Every time when you pass the resectoscope in Indian male urethra, you feel it is tight. Something hurts you. Even after doing OTs, a little with the experience you manipulate, is there any role of 20, uh, 2 by 24 in the even today where you can do nice uh, TURP without damaging the because post urp stricture is very very difficult to manage sir if after oiu three times he will tell everybody that after doing this surgery only i got over this problem i was happy i was happy so to avoid that uh, any comments on this smaller do you use smaller sheets or what is the other alternative See, basically first and foremost i have never used otis urethrotomy in my experience number one otis huh? otis never used because okay. uh, we have been taught not to use in our institute. We are never used there. And you mind. use dilators? We use routinely dilators. I, that's why I said 22, 24, and 26. Three dilators which I have shown in the trolley. Yes, yes, yes. Dilators. So, more, majority of the cases we are able to dilate up to 26. And yeah. as you know, if there is any problem at the meatus in introduction of the tip of the bougie, then we do a meatotome. Dorsal. Yeah. Do a ventral meatotomy. Then we see whether we can pass in the uh, dilators freely. In we have found that in majority of the cases we are successful. Suppose if such a rare situation occurs, if even the <coughs> bigger size like 24 or 26 bougie cannot be negotiated or be passed across the thing, then yes, nowadays there are smaller 22 by 24 French uh, resectoscope sheets available wherein you can perform and I have done resection with the smaller size as well. Not always in cases. Yes.
Uh, I strongly agree. In fact, uh, I will tell you openly because our main agenda in this is surgical technique related based information. Wolf has given 22 by 24. Extraordinarily good. I am impressed after buying it. I don't have fear uh, that I will immediately take 22 by 24. And the loop for 24 by 26 and 22 by 24 is same. That is the advantage with the Wolf. And uh, that uh, uh, no conflicts of interest, but I am giving the information. Even other companies have 22 by 24. And uh, uh, any, I feel, sir, if the patient is on Foley's catheter, luxury of uh, uh, doing TURP. Any comment on that, sir? If the patient is on Foley's catheter, you will feel, if you put jelly, oh, you can go like a happily into the, and you nicely in front and back movements are not at all affecting the erythra. This we do in honestly in children RIRS, sir. I put one day before male uh, Foley's catheter 10 number to insert the access sheet safely. Uh, really one day is sufficient to dilate the urethra two French more. What I really, and I was in fact uh, give, I was trying to give an example like in RIRS and here. Definitely works. Those patients who are on two, three months on a uh, urethra gets dilated. And it is very easy to insert the sheath there. Sheath. Because it is elastic and it dilates uh, and jello can jelly enough. What is not necessary? Even dilatation not much necessary because subnatal region also. Uh, sir, Rajkumar is asked, uh, Sir, incidence of retrograde ejaculation after uh, BNI in young patients, can we do BNI without any risk of retrograde ejaculation in young patients? So, uh, the once in BNI, there should not be any retro, too much of retrograde ejaculation because yes. you are not uh, resecting the bladder neck totally, disturbing yeah. your only one incision. Yes. So there yes. should not be. There should not be. If you are, uh, I think Rajkumar, if you are uh, interested in preserving his uh, function, you should be less aggressive in resecting. As sir said, give only one. It's like a trial for him both to preserve. I, like 30 to 40, you should consider them. You should not cut every all the prostate and give a good widening and screwed up his uh, uh, ejaculatory function badly. It's a good question that better to give, sir said, one incision also good. There are three incisions given once. Ultimately, if more widen you make the uh, lumen, uh, more the chance of retrograde ejaculation and disturbing the Veru region and uh, naturally retrograde ejaculation will be there. And uh, more severe symptoms of retention, then you have to reject a little bit of median lobe. Then retrograde ejaculation will increase. I mean, these are practical methods of approach. Yes, of course, papers are all there, same supporting. Uh, there is no doubt about it. Sir, uh, we completed one hour with this, and uh, I think we have covered all the basic points. I really appreciate the, the uh, presentation which you made. Very, very, very crisp presentation for the juniors. You told the basic points, whatever the Meyer Meyer technique, <laughs> we can do it, sorry. So there may be other techniques, but the basic mechanism of resection will not change the loop length, loop breadth. Especially I liked how to remove the attached chip. Initially, it gets frustrated people. Every time it hangs, it won't get detached and go into the bladder. So he said, uh, dip uh, after cutting little dip, automatically go down, cut and then dip then automatically push. In fact, you push in, it will go inside for time being till the cavity is maintained. That's an excellent point, sir, which at least I, I thought. I don't know how you made this presentation. Very few people make this type of presentation. Even cano shaped, that also has an important point. And third, he said long length, uh, any length you can take, he said, if you go continuously, long length can occur. But if you go continuously in a shaped manner, then that piece cannot come out through the access sheet. It should be a straight long. If you take uh, to take a longer piece obliquely like this, then then lelix evacuator cannot uh, get out and you have to hold it and take it out. In fact, sir, sometimes uh, we see small amount of the uh, uh, tissue directly slipping into this thing. It won't come. So we have to hold it with a thick loop and then take out through the urethra. It will come out. So these are all important. Sir also told that at the end, you have to carefully inspect all the pieces, otherwise they cause post-operative obstruction. And uh, there is there are many points to be discussed in a large gland, how to do it, uh, uh, when to help, take help of the senior. This is beyond of our scope. Next time when you when we do, we again will do. Today, we will conclude the session. I really appreciate Rajiv, sir, 
the way you maintain your cool and present very well anything given task you do very well sir thank you very much thank you thank you sir thank you sir we will conclude